One of the least productive things you can do is context switch. When you switch tasks, particularly if you're switching tools as well when you do it, you reset your contextual flow, and that has a very real, very measurable effect on your productivity. Now, when you migrate from a DIY tool chain to a more comprehensive DevOps platform, you are eliminating not just integrations that you need to manage, but also a huge amount of that switching costs, and you're giving yourself the opportunity to build a better, more comprehensive and productive flow. And one example of that is documentation. In our next talk, Philip Westphalen and Benedict Stimmel will discuss their journey toward making the developer documentation process as fun and as fluid for developers as the coding process that they were already following. Let's hear what they have to say. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, we will share a little bit about our way, uh, how we bring the documentation back to the fun level. So documentation is dead, long live documentation. Um, yes, uh, me, um, my name is Philip Westphalen. I'm from Hamburg, work for the Flores online shop. And yeah, I'm, I'm a software engineer there. And a part of that, I uh, manage the GitLab meetup here in Hamburg. And I'm also a GitLab hero. Nice. Thank you, Phil, Philip. Uh, my name is Ben or Benedict or Ben, whatever. I'm the CEO of um, the same company, um, Blume 2000 AG. We are a Hamburg-based company, um, as you already uh, thought, because of uh, Philip doing the Hamburg meetup. Um, I've been using GitLab for a while now, and I'm not a hero, but uh, maybe in the future I will be. I don't know yet. Uh, you can see my handles here. I'm a passionate software developer, and um, I'm still trying to, to get into the code whenever I can, discussing architecture. Um, I, I love that very much, and documentation is always a part of architecture as well. So um, yeah, we, we thought let's let's dig into that topic. It's it's always a little bit hard to speak about it, um, but um, yeah, I, I think we have a good good way of, of showing you what we like about documentation. Um, let's head back to uh, Philip. He will uh, start. Yes, uh, we will start uh, with a daily disaster of docu well, with documentation. Uh, so we're describing first uh, why writing documentation make no make no more fun to us. And now uh, Bini starts with the product owner view or non-technical person view. Yeah, right. So you probably guessed it by now. We are, we are trying to switch between the roles. Uh, I'm doing the non-dev role um, as it is most of my time in the daily business as well. And uh, Philip is doing more or less of the dev view. <laughs> what you can see here is my, my daily what the heck moment when opening Confluence. Um, or any other documentation tool like Confluence, but it's always a good example. It's not that, yeah, it's not what you would have expected from a documentation. So I've, I've picked a random page from our um, um, from our Confluence, and what you can see here is, is a, a, a little bit smaller view, like 13 inch display um, and, and a half. You, you can't read anything. It's no structure. It's like a lot of white space, no information there. No one knows what's going on. It's very hard to motivate people writing in that. Um, it's it's very hard to focus on the content. Most of the time, you focus on on the layout and, and making it somewhat readable. Um, you you all know that. And, and as you can see here, someone yeah really thought through publishing the page. I don't know what happened there. It's a very big accident. And, and, and of that, there's no testing. You, you, you cannot see what changed during the documentation very well. Um, so yeah, I, I don't like it very much. You all know that, but somewhat, I don't know why, it's, it's in the comfort zone for most of the POs. And they, if you tell them, yeah, let's document stuff, they, they first think of conference. Um, so that's the, the PO view. Uh, let's take it over to the dev view. Yeah, for me as a de developer, um the the document writing documentation uh feels mostly boring it's 
or I have to head to the uh, web page and type something in into Confluence. So it's feeling like a chore because I'm wanting to write code and do the fancy stuff. Um, and yes, and I mentioned before, um, yeah, we have to move out of our fancy IDE and jump into a tool which is full blown like uh, a Word document editing. And yeah, you have so much things to do to bring a good looking um, yeah, documentation. Um, and when I'm, I'm, I'm um, my, my truly passion is, or my, not my truly passion, it's my comfort zone as a developer is Markdown. <laughs> this is everything I need. Uh, I have uh, code like um, structuring uh, my, my, my content. And that's, this is everything I need. And I don't need a full blown tool to write uh, our documentation. Yes. So um, this was our pain. And now we switch to our dream world, I think. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. Um, so uh, I, I think you can can relate a lot to to what we uh, told you about here um, in, in this fast example. So we, we wanted to get uh, get to catch you and and not waste too much time on it. But there's so much to tell about the the disasters and the pain. But but you all know it, right? So so let's move away from the pain to the good parts, right? To the light and um, for us, uh, at least from a feature a point of view, it, it means that we have a lightweight tool that is not not over 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 yeah overgrown with with buttons and stuff, and you can do this and that and whatever, and you you don't need like ninety percent of that that things, and um, that, that's why we want to focus on the on the part that's necessary. So that's that's why writing good looking documentation it needs to. Yeah, it needs to focus on creating content and not not layout, right? So nowadays you spend like ninety percent of the time making it look good and ten percent putting the information in there, and that that should definitely switch around. So ninety percent getting the information in there and ten percent making it look good. And to make that happen, you you need because I'm I'm not a documentation pro, and I think Phil isn't as well. So we are developers, right? And we are not technical writers or something. So we need guidance and structure. So the tool should give us that so that confluence is like, there's no guidance, no structure at all. So you're lost in there. And the tool should should yeah should guide you should help you. Um, uh, from my point of view. And um, <laughs> that's, that's like a little bit of uh, so we are not trying to bash that much. But the search is like a key feature to to find stuff in the documentation. Navigation isn't isn't that important to find stuff. Navigation is giving structure, but if you're looking for something, ah, oh, what was the VPN setup like? Then then this the search should be pointing you exactly there, and not like oh here are fifty pages talking about somewhat with a V and a P and an N in there. Maybe you look there. So that's yeah, that doesn't help. Um, so all in all, it, it just should be should be fun to to write the documentation. And it should be, yeah, it should be easy to read it. Should, it should be fun. And to make that happen, uh, Phil is talking a little bit about the requirements. Yeah, uh, the requirements uh, are quite a lot um, because we have two worlds colliding: the dev and the POs. So it's mostly important that we find a tool which is lightweight and especially the language where we are writing the, for example, the markup um, should be simple and easy to learn and uh, intuitive. Intuitive, Yes. And so the language must provide the basics, like we have to add uh, links and pictures and tables and whatever, uh, whatever you need in a basic set. But also um, features are important like code blocks because we are writing sometimes technical um, guides uh, where it's important that we can choose a language uh, of the programming language and uh, to structure it good. So it's feel cool <laughs> and um, yeah. And 
this is the, these were the requirements for the language or the, the, the style we need. And uh, the tool itself needs some essential features. Uh, Bina um, mentioned it before, search is the most important thing, uh, especially uh, that you don't only uh, search for headlines or uh, uh, yeah, a rudimentary um, search. You have to search the whole content to find your uh, your related information you need. Yes, and navigation should be also uh, very simple, so it feels native to um, build a structure or in, um, in best case, it should be uh, done by the directory <laughs> uh, directory structure. Yes, and um, another very important thing is that you can write the documentation in the web, like in the web IDE of GitLab or as a developer uh, in the local um, local IDE or whatever you want uh, to do in the repository locally. So, um, and the editing process should be, yeah, should should be easy. You only edit one page and you are done. And yes. And what, uh, another thing which is important, uh, it should be a home where you can ex access anywhere and everything. So uh, even, when you are on a smartphone or at the desktop, you should be uh, use the tool very good. Um, and yes, and when it's come to local um, writing documentation, a really cool feature would be that you see um, that you have live feedback. So uh, when you are editing um, the documentation, it should be uh, shown immediately in the web browser um, where is the uh, documentation rendered. Yes, and uh, nobody likes uh, maintaining and hosting. Um, so the tool should be really easy to maintain um, and to host. Yes, these are, as a developer view, uh, the most important thing. Yes. Yeah, I get that. So so we had the, the, the product owner perspective, the dev perspective. I think you all also think that that's like a good start or maybe have like some advanced features you need. But for us, this this was like the, the set we needed. And um, obviously, like tools like conference and, and such provide them, but but not in the lightweight fashion, right? So it's, it's all in there, but it's very hard to use. And we will get there and, and show you some examples of, of tools we are currently using. But first, let's um, make a short excourse um, on what you actually should write into your documentation. Uh, and some of you might thought, mm, I don't run to write documentation at all. Like, uh, let's just generate all this stuff. And I was a big fan of that as well. But um, as more as I thought about architecture and, and people and communication in, in general, I, I got used to, or I, I, I got fond of the idea that, that it's very hard to generate documentation because it's, it's like, like code formatting. You, you don't write pretty code because the computer wants to, you to do that. Um, you want that, that so that other developers can read it better and, and see the structure very well and, and get, get started immediately with coding and not just first have to like clutter all the stuff and then find out, wow, what has someone done here? And for me, this is the same with documentation. So if I generate documentation, it's very hard for a human to read it. It's easy for a machine to read it. Obviously, there are some use cases like, like shown here in this, this picture where you can generate the documentation and you should because it's a, you document a very structured thing that can be very easily generated into a structured documentation. It's very near to the machine, right? Like a REST interface, like you can see the open API standard documentation. And that's, that's pretty easy to generate that. But like generating a class diagram for me has no value at all. Like I can go into the code and generate it myself, or I can like see the, the Java documentation, which is on there. So most of the time I think about what is the audience for my code and uh, for my documentation and for my code. And 
what would that audience maybe need to understand the code and the code itself shouldn't have any comments and stuff like that because it should be self-explanatory right so very well-named methods you are not, not the topic for today but i don't need to document that because it's already documented itself but i need the context around that this maybe the purpose of the code the, what am i doing here everything that's not ex in the code itself and um, that i can't generate that because it's not in the code itself right so maybe you you think about the, the generating stuff in a, in a different way um after that or or you've got an idea what what i'm talking about so what we did we we focused on the not generating part here right so we needed a tool for writing the stuff ourselves um and obviously we bashed a lot on confluence <laughs> until now so let's have a look at which tools we we like and we we use yeah uh we explored some tools um which met our requirements or we know um they look great in the real world um yeah and the first um tool is viewpress uh it's most commonly know that it's that's the um, the, um, the documentation of Vue.js and it's written in Vue.js, which is cool because we um, write uh, our online shop in Vue.js, so we could extend um, the documentation if we have more advanced needs. Yeah, and it's a basic site generator, um, so we have files or have our structure. Um, yeah, have our structure uh, of our documentation somewhere and it's print out um, HTML documents in the end where we can put anywhere. Um, yes. And uh, the cool thing about that, it's written or you write your documentation in Markdown. So it's provide everything you need. You know um, how Markdown works because it's everywhere in GitLab, <laughs> like uh, in the Git, uh, GitLab issues. So um, we have to daily uh, deal with Markdown. So it's commonly known. Yeah, and it got us um, a good search about um, over the content, um, what's in the documentation. Previously, it was only in the headlines, um, but they released uh, version two uh, some weeks ago. And now you can search um, additionally in the content. So it's improving and a, living, a good living tool. Yeah, and um, also it's, it has it have a great performance. Um, it's re really fast because it's Vue.js in the background and it's really simple to use. Yeah, um, and it's simply generate our documentation very well. <laughs> For every use case, well, sounds sounds like a sounds like a good tool, right? Yes. So um, <laughs> let's let's look into an alternative. Um, so actually, um, there's not that much difference in the core concept of the tool itself, which I really like. So there's MK Docs, which is also a, a static code generator or documentation generator built on Python. It has a very great extension, or, or yeah, it's. It's, it's built there's something built on mk docs which is material for mk docs not a theme so don't get uh, don't get that switched around it's it's more like an extension and um that's also ha has all the same properties which uh, phil mentioned for view um view js documentation um view press um so i think it's in the end it's um we, we get to a comparison in the next slide um but looking at the at the feature side it's, it's more or less even there's a bit more of like advanced features because mk docs has, has been on the market for a long time but essentially it's it's actually the, the same thing um let's let's end with the two comparisons so we have view press and we have a material for mk docs they are both super easy to set up both based on markdown which is easy for product owners and developers to write um it's it's not that hard to to have a structure with that um and to like to like plus or minus for us as uh, it was like viewpress a fairly new player phil mentioned v2 currently in beta uh, has a better search right uh, but there's so there's still a lot of stuff to do until it's that mature and uh, as material for mk docs um so 
there's a ton of features uh, features in the MK Dogs with a very powerful search. Um, the only downside, or it's not a real downside, but Material has an open source strategy of releasing new features to payer group, which is the insider version. And after a few um, contributions or after a few um, donations, these features go into the open source free version. But the free version is, is enough for like most of the people. So there are some features in the pro or in, it's not a pro version, right? So in the, in the early alpha version, the insider version, which are nice, but they are not really necessary. So um, yeah, I think you, you will have a lot more features over ViewPress with the free version as well. Um, what we did in the end, we decided for material for MK Docs. Um, so it's like also like a visual thing. We, we simply liked that more. There was a dark mode, you know, dark mode, great. Yeah. Now ViewPress has a dark mode as well, but uh, yeah, you get the, the hang. So the, actually, we, we started with ViewPress and then migrated to MK Docs. And the migration took five minutes. So probably migrating back would also be five minutes. You get the tools are very incomparable. Incom um, I think, Phil, you you have five minutes now to, to tell us something about how we did that on the technical side. Yeah, so. uh, the setup in GitLab is quite easy. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, first of all, you have to do the um, MK doc setup. It's just following the instruction. You have only a small configuration file, uh, which you can see on the slide. and the the biggest thing in there is simply the or well, not simply it's, it's a navigation you have to uh, define uh, the navigation there yes and serving and building mk docs is quite easy this makes really fun because uh, this uh, comment is so short mk docs uh, serve is for serving uh, the, the live feedback um, thing when you are developing locally or MK Docs build when you uh, generate the site, uh, yeah, the pages. So, and the next thing is uh, directory structure. It's, I think it's a common uh, way to do the, to, to to structure the documentation there. Uh, you simply have your navigation synced there, and um, everything you need is uh, written there. Uh, the teams have their own space, and you can structure it like you want. Yes, and um, yeah, a nice to know thing is um, mostly uh, we use Draw.io to draw our conception or, or, or concepts and architectures. And we um, can simply change the directory or the storage uh, from Draw.io to GitLab. And then you save as a uh, uh, PNG or SVG. These both are edit, uh, editable, so you don't need two files. And just, you can simply save it in the docs, and it's updated automatically when you change, change something and save it there, which is really awesome. Um, That's very yeah. awesome, yeah. That's very awesome. Like the GitLab repository as a storage yes. is very you awesome. You don't have to download it, search it in your local finder, and up, uh, put it in the directory or upload it. Yes. Yeah, sometimes there's just not, not enough features in the documentation tool to generate such a diagram, and, and that's why you need the draw more than. But I think it's it's OK. You don't want to have that in the yes. documentation tool. It's, it's too yeah. hard. Confluence users uh, no draw already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the setup in the GitLab pages, uh, or we use for hosting GitLab pages, which is really easy to use because we have only uh, a job where we uh, build our um, application, save it in the uh, directory, and push the directory to GitLab pages. And uh, this is the whole file, right? That's the whole GitLab. Yeah. So besides yeah, the review, the review app, app, is everything, yes. right? Uh, this is yeah. everything a review episode for for previews um yes and the yeah it's uh, we use a, a custom domain to feel like more inclusive to our lens or our technical landscape so we don't have to type in the long uh, gitlab io page uh we simply type in our custom page so yes yeah pretty great right what 
It's great. Yes, I, yes, I, I yes. It's great. It's, it's pretty great. <laughs> I like it. As, I like the custom domain. It's, it's a cool yeah, thing. So it's awesome. it's a, okay. So let, let's show you a quick uh, live demo. So I think we have like one one or two minutes yes. left. So let's let's just do a quick demo and then uh, move to the next uh, to the last slide. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I've prepared something. Uh, prepared something. I prepared a browser and an IDE next to each other. I, I already did like the MK uh, serve thing here to, to just serve the, the documentation. And what you can see here is, is one of our documentation pages. Uh, you can see the nice navigation and stuff. So get into that later. And like yeah, here, for example, like structuring blocks and admonitions here and what I can do now is I can, for example, say this is not like a, this is like, this is not uh, folded out, it's folded in admonition here, right? So I've changed that. And after a few seconds, um, it's changed here in the documentation. Let me do a reload. Um, sometimes, it's, uh, so it actually is live reload, but you have to wait for it for a bit. Like there's a 20 seconds or 15 seconds delay in there. Um, yeah, and now you can see this is like folding out and in and not folded out the whole time. Let me say, ah, I, I like to change it back. Um, and want to change the browser version here to something weird. And um, a few seconds later, the right side is it's edited. Um, okay, I, I, I think you will get the hang of it right here. So it's this again. And uh, what I can do now is uh, if I like this change, um, I can push it and so I, I have a change for you here. I can see what I changed. I can look into the history and, and see what others changed. Um, you can hold, you can use the whole uh, Git thing, right? Um, so that's that's pretty great. As a developer, you don't have to leave the IDE. And as a PO, you can use the GitLab Web IDE to edit this. So you have to get you don't have the live reload, but I think it's good as well. And also a PO could use this tool as well. And you got a Markdown preview, which cover the mode. Ah, exactly. Yeah, uh, you're right. So you could also writing. use the Markdown. <laughs> yes, uh, you're right. So you could actually also use the Markdown preview, um, which is also which is even faster. But some of the features are like, not that. advanced features are not available there. All right. Yes. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> um, I, I forgot about that. Okay, let's move back into the um, slides, and um, I think there's nothing more, much more to say. But um, thank you very much. For me, it was a pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I hope you could take something from that, Phil. What What do you have to say? Yeah, make make uh, well, makes me a lot of fun to do that. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's a great and uh, documentation makes fun for a long time now. Yeah, I guess so. Right, it, it's it's fun to do that. I I actually I've actually liked to write our platform documentation because it was fun. It, it helped me. I didn't have to think about the layout so much. It, it looked good very fast. Yes. So thank you very much for listening. And um, we are done. Bye bye. Ciao.